Hi, how is everybody doing today? Super great to have you here. I'm incredibly stoked to, to be up here too. I feel like all famous. Last time I was in a small room. <laughs> so um, I want to start off with uh, who I am. So before, actually before I tell you who I am, this, is, uh, this session is just focused on promoting and marketing your podcast, which is I think something that is a little bit lacking in the world of podcasting. I think, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? And so uh, let me tell you first before I, I start to delve into all of the details, oh, thank you, love, um, who I am. So my name is Elsie Escobar. <laughs> I am a digital media strategist, and I, I work primarily with health and wellness uh, practitioners and, and heart-centered entrepreneurs getting them to uh, basically allow their voices to come out with a really huge emphasis on audio and podcasting, because that is my love. Uh, I've been podcasting since 2006. Um, I have been in the podcasting <laughs> world since then. I kind of fell passionately in love with it, like as soon as I uh, kind of had it come into my ears, whenever I got my, my first iPod, I was like, yay! Uh, and the other thing that I do is that I am a uh, dynamic lifestyle specialist. And what that means is that I help, I'm also a yoga instructor, and I teach yoga teachers how to take their skill set that they uh, learn on the mat and apply it to their lives as well, including work, business, and finances, because we have a little bit of a disconnect when it comes to that. Another thing that I do is that I, I am the social media strategy, uh, social media manager over at Libsyn. And Libsyn is the uh, largest podcast host and distribution network, and they've been out since 2004. I've been working at Libsyn since late 2008, and I've been kind of, um, you know, into all layers of the company, sometimes selling sponsorships and things like that, and I sort of fell into the niche of reaching out to the podcasters themselves, which is something that I really, really kind of connect with. So I run all the social media properties, uh, I write on the blog, and I have recently just started, finally, the Libsyn podcast <laughs> as of um, uh, the summer, as of this summer, which is really great. And while I do all this stuff, I'm also a stay-at-home mom. So I'm with my girls most of the time, and um, most of the work that I do is in motion. <laughs> juggling many things at the same time. So um, all I can tell you is that it's challenging, but it's certainly really awful for me. So who are you guys? Who are you guys? I would think, if I may venture to kind of um, guess, that you are some business owners, professionals, some creatives, entrepreneurs, am I right? Because if I'm wrong, I need to know now <laughs> so, so that I can shift things around when I present. So is that right? Okay, awesome. Very good. So basically, you're awesome. That's who you are. You're awesome. And sometimes awesome people need some tools to be able to get their awesomeness out. And they also need to kind of connect with the audience that thinks you're awesome too. So that's like... Those are some of the most challenging things that I have found, especially with creative people. Because we have a little bit of a, of a kind of a, a, an obstacle when it comes to that. So, something that I'm going to ask of you to do before I start to kind of uh, delve into this a little bit, is that you stay open. You allow yourself to kind of come into this with a beginner mind. You might have heard some of these things in the past and have said, well, that doesn't apply to me. And I did that all the time. People would give me advice, and the first thing I would do is like, well, no, no, you don't understand. I'm, I'm this yoga teacher that's podcasting that does not, that does not align with what's going on. I'm a, a stay-at-home mom that you don't understand. I have no time. So there was always this no that I set up first. And the minute that I started to kind of allow myself to step back and say, okay, how can I make this work for me? In what way does it align with me? I started to see that I could really start to take things to another notch. So we're going to be focusing primarily on this foundation and development. So 
At first, when we begin, when I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking on your foundation. That's gonna be big, and it's not quite as interesting as all of the development and all the tactics that we have. A lot of people just want the stuff. But before I give you the stuff, I gotta give you your foundation. Because if you don't have that foundation, there's no way that you're gonna take your podcast to the next level. It's just not gonna happen. And I see it happen all the time. So you're gonna hear me talk a little bit more about that foundation, and then we'll get to all the nitty gritty stuff. So the reason the foundation is so important, and this is what I say to all of my students, the ones that come to my classes, I focus a lot on your foundation, the way that you step into the world. Like if you're doing, let's say, I'm sure you've seen standing poses in yoga class, the things that are on the ground, your hands and your feet. If your hands and your feet are not steady into the earth, it doesn't matter what else your body is doing because you're not gonna be able to stabilize yourself. So I spend a lot of time drawing and making sure your foundation is steady so that you can find the expansion. This is why the roots of what you started are so important for your podcast. And it just applies to everything that you do. So the first layer of foundation is education. It's education. So what is a podcast? Can anybody answer that question for me? Just anybody? I know it's like I'm putting you on the spot, but can anybody tell me what that is? It's a serialized audio or, and or video um, show. Awesome. Very good. Anybody else? Okay. So the reason I'm asking you to do this is because that's a big thing that we need to learn as podcasters. We need to be able to articulate with our audience what a podcast is, particularly those of us that we want to introduce our work to that may not necessarily, that are total, that would totally jive with what we're doing, but how are you going to tell them what it is if they don't, if you just go, oh, it's a podcast, and they go, what the heck is that, right? So let me give you a little bit of a, um, a clear description, and then I want you, once you leave this room, to make it your own. So it's a type of digital episodic media, which can be either audio, video, PDF, and even EPUB, that is delivered via RSS, AKA that it can be subscribed to. So this is incredibly important, that it can be subscribed to, okay? So another element of podcasting is that in addition to that definition, it is also a method of delivery. So you can create a podcast from existing media content that is delivered via RSS. Does that make sense? So both in those, those instances, it's still a podcast. So let's take the second thing for me that I really like to, to see about it, uh, to really um, kind of repurpose content. So let's say you have a series of interviews you did for somebody. You can just clump them together and then very quickly create a podcast from it and have that just be its one thing. Like it's not something that continues to be updated, it's just that. It's the podcast where you're interviewing those people. <laughs> and that's it, you don't have to keep it updated. So this is something that I believe so much. It is our duty as pioneers and change makers because that's what podcasters are to share what we are passionate about, as well as how best to consume our content. So part of our responsibility as new media content creators is to be able to teach our audience how to access our content. We cannot expect people to know exactly what they need to do just because you know it. This was a huge lesson for me. Because I would tell people, oh, here's my podcast, but they wouldn't know how to consume it. It took me forever to be able to explain to people what it is. So the first thing that we have to do is to be able to teach our audience to take action with us. Do, and you do it by meeting them where they are and then invite them to do something more. So let's say the only thing you say to somebody is like, hey, I have this really killer podcast. You can subscribe to it via iTunes. And what if they say, I don't have iTunes? I know that's probably not gonna be happening anytime soon, but 
but what if they say that? What if they say, you know, I have my, you know, my iPod and I don't even know how to stick it in the thing. I have this happen all the time with um, some of my clients um, that are uh, a little bit older or are less tech savvy. And I've had to provide po my podcast on CDs for them. So you've got to meet them where they are and then invite them to do something else with you. Then invite them to come to your website and play your podcast from your website. Then invite them, or maybe even give them that CD and say like, hey, if you like it, why don't you go here? And you let them know, you don't expect something. So that's like, that's something that we really need to do. And this, once they do step into you, they'll be the first ones to do stuff with you and for you, which is super important. The next thing about foundation is that you need to stabilize your existing users, your existing get the, the, your existing guests, your existing listeners, your existing fans. How many of you guys know at least one of your listeners by name? That is, oh good, yay, yay. This is good. So if I were to give you homework, I would say get to know at least 10. Find out at least 10 of your listeners, first and last name. And this was inspired by one of my friends, a uh, longtime podcaster friend, and also one of my mentors, Cliff Ravenscraft, who is the podcast answer man. We've been hanging out in the podcasting sphere for many, many years, and this is something that he built his business on. It's just getting to know one person at a time. So, <laughs> that's my girl. Little ones really love to be recognized. So another thing to do, in addition to getting to know your audience, is to recognize them. To make sure that you reach out, to say hello by name. When they reach out to you via social media, when they email you, check out their stuff. Who are they? Connect with them in some way. Comment about something. If they say, you, you know, they send you an email and they tell you, you're awesome, then email them back. Yeah, you too. I love the way you did X, Y, and Z on your website. I really love you take the time, you step into them, and they'll step into you. And this over here, por vida, por vida forever. My business coach, Erica Lyermark, she actually comes into um, kind of teaching about uh, business and sales, that you think about your customers as customers for life, por vida, forever. So you think about your listeners forever. Think about it in that respect. They'll be with you. So it's like, those are the guys that are gonna be there with you. You take, you take care of them in that way. You don't think like so much like, I wanna get 100,000 people, but you connect with the ones that you have right in front of you. Keep it interesting. <laughs> and by keep it interesting, I don't mean that you're gonna have to all of a sudden do something crazy like that. Although sometimes with little kids, you, you know, to make them pay attention to you, you do. But um, when you're doing your podcast, it's not necessarily that you try to have, you know, all of a sudden do all kinds of tricks to keep them engaged, but you have to keep it interesting for yourself. When you start to listen, to yourself on your own podcast. Are you interested? Are you still passionate about what you're podcasting about? Are you still into it? That's the kind of thing that keeps things interested. I, I can't, at the, I, right now, at least at the top of my head, gosh, I wish I would have thought about this later, um, but I started to listen to a couple of podcasts simply because that they were so into what they were talking about and whatever the subject matter was, I had no interest in, like nothing. But all of a sudden, I wanted, to, I just was so engaged with, the, with what they were talking about. They were super interested, therefore it brought me to be so sucked into their world, which is something that's <laughs> super important from here. Provide opportunities for engagement and participation for your, from your audience, from your existing audience. And when I say this, this isn't something like, hey, tweet out, you know, that you love my podcast. But it, it's not necessarily that. But it's things like, at least for me, and I know this is perhaps just a female thing, but putting up outfit A and putting up outfit B on my Facebook page will get a lot of engagement. <laughs> from my audience, 
because I know who they are. That has nothing to do with yoga. That has something to do with me. It's engaging them and to step into who I am as a human being. So when you ask them, you know, questions about whatever. Do I, do you, what's your favorite restaurant in Pittsburgh? What's your favorite hamburger in Pittsburgh? Something along those lines where they kind of advise you. And then also that advice is something that I ask for my listeners as well. I went in and I showed them like six uh, of my potential new podcast rebranding artwork and they chose the one that they liked. They gave me so much information, it was crazy. And requests, you know, you can ask them for stuff from them that maybe, you know, what is your favorite X, Y, Z? So they don't have to necessarily be about your podcast. They can be just about you and them in a real personal way, which is uh, a really fantastic way to connect with your audience. And then you have to provide them with the tools to share your greatness. There are a lot of people who want to share what you have to offer. And as much as they would want to maybe, you know, even write out a tweet, they don't quite, it's not as organic to a lot of people to do stuff like that. So if you have something specific, if you can say like, hey, I have this image, would you mind sharing this? Or here's a link, uh, can you share these little things that I'm doing? You ask them to do it. I did that for my people. I said, hey, do you mind, I'm doing this presentation, would you guys mind sharing this? Here are some tweets. And because they love me, they did that for me. I didn't ask for them to do it because they had to. I said, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and do it. And you provide them, you give them the tools for them to do it for you. They will, they want to help you, especially if they're your fans. So now after learning about that, this is the third aspect of your foundation, which I find to be perhaps one of the hardest things to do. It was for me, it continues to be hard for me. So this mug here, <laughs> This is my personal mug. This is the mug that gets me through winter time. <laughs> it's the one that I hold in my hands and I feel warm and fuzzy. So this mug has meaning to me. If you guys saw this mug, it probably wouldn't have anything to do with you. So I want you to keep something in mind. Meaning comes from you. You impart the meaning into it. Somebody else might not believe it. Okay, so I came up with this system which is based on the SMART goal setting system. If you guys uh, don't know about the SMART goal setting system, you, I'm sure you can search for it, but I'm gonna kind of break it out and sprinkle a little bit of the yogi juice in, on it so that you see it. So I based the goal setting system on a sacred cup, on a sacred cup. Sacred cup in Latin is capis. Capis, which is sort of the root word for capiche, you know, understand? <laughs> so capiche is something you can hold in your hand, it's sacred, it's something you can bear and, and it's, it's compact and it's steady. So capiche, when you're setting a goal for your podcast, especially for marketing and promotion, is that this is incredibly important. So C, you have to be very clear about what you want. And by clear, it might be a little bit boring and a little bit too square, such as, I would like to, I would like to gain 100 followers on Twitter in four weeks. I would like to up my listener uh, audience, my listening audience, by 5% in two weeks. So it has to be that specific, sort of not something like, I really want to, I make it into, you know, new and noteworthy in iTunes. Like that's not quite, that's not very clear. It has to be very tangible. Because the next thing is that it has to be accessible. You need to be able to measure, you need to be able to measure if that happened. So if you say I want to up, you know, 100 people to follow me on Twitter, you'll be able to assess that. You'll be able to see it. The next thing that it needs to be is that it has to be possible. So the reason about you know being new and noteworthy in iTunes, yes, you could be new and noteworthy in iTunes if you're new, 
But if you've had your podcast for a while, you're not going to be new and noteworthy, so that's probably not the best goal to have. Uh, so it does need to be possible. It has to be something that when you say it, you actually feel that it's possible to do. There are some of us who can say, I'm going to up 25% of my listeners in two weeks, and you know it. You know you can do it. There's some of us who like shake at that. So you choose a goal that is possible for you and that feels good inside of you, that you can trust in. The next thing is that it needs to be important for you and what you want to do with your podcast. This is also key because if you're trying to build a business, or let's say you are trying to monetize your podcast, if you are choosing, let's say, uh, just uh, let's, let's pretend it's more about Twitter than it is about building an email list or even setting an email list up. If your goal is to eventually start to monetize your podcast, then building an email list would more than likely be a little bit stronger choice than having a hundred more Twitter followers at a specific time. It de but it depends on your, the importance and how it, it measures with you. If you're a big Twitter person, then yeah. But if you're not, then why? It has to be important for you. The next thing is that it has to be seasonal. And I say seasonal as a time, time kind of stamp. It has to be able to be in a time frame. So it's not like you say, I want you know, to up 10% of my uh, listener base, period. <laughs> you give yourself <laughs> some time. <laughs> so you say like for the winter time, for four weeks or whatever. Every season, we have a different shift, right? So we start getting ready for fall, we start getting ready for winter. There are certain choices that we make in winter and fall that we do not make in spring and, and summer. So I like seasonal better because it, it has a little bit more of an organic nature in it as well. So all of these build the best kind of goal that you can for yourself. Now, one of the reasons that I use the word accessible instead of measurable is because I find measurable to be too stiff and too hard. Let's say you want to have three pieces, or let's say you want to have like 10% or, or I don't know, three or five pieces of um, audio feedback from your listeners or any feedback from your listeners in an area of like three weeks. Let's say that's your goal. And you don't need it, but you get one piece of feedback that blows your socks off and just makes you know why you're doing what you're doing. That, to me, is a great thing. You assess it, and you go, wow, that, that's that, that's it, I got my goal. So even though you didn't get five pieces of feedback, you got one that was amazing. So this gives you a little bit of leeway so you know inside of yourself whether or not things are working. All right, so just to recap, your foundation is education, stabilization of your existing audience, and make a peace method, being able to hold things, a goal, into a sacred cup in your hand, whatever that might be for you. So that's why meaning comes from you. So when you set a goal, it's you, it's your goal. Nobody else can tell you what matters for your podcast. That, all of that foundation is power. That's the power of your podcast. That makes it strong. So let's move over to the development aspect of it. So once you set that power, that foundation, now you can start to extend out. So it's like what we were talking about in terms of the yoga poses. You stabilize the core, you stabilize that foundation so that you can start to expand and get bigger when you do these things, which is the development of your podcast and how you start to expand your audience, which is what everybody wants to do. All right, so the first thing is you have to be a detective. <laughs> you have to find out where your audience is. And there are really simple things, like observing, finding out where they are. And one of the ways that you can do this is whenever people email you, figure out where they are. I have a lot of people in one of my email lists, what I do is I ask them, hey, tell me where you practice my podcast. Because mine is yoga, so they'll do what I say. And, they'll, and so they will tell me, and they'll say, like, I just practice. Some people send me pictures of where they practice, and it's amazing. I would not know this if I didn't ask, right? So you, that's part of it, is, is, is asking. 
ask people where they are. Observe where they are. And by observing, it's like, you know, what are the people, who are the people who kind of like jive with what you're doing? Who are the people that resonate with your content, even if they're not listening to you, but that you're like, oh, I really dig hanging out with these people. Where else do they go? And listen, listen to what people are saying. What else are they listening to? What magazines are they reading? What are they watching on television? We are all content producers. It's not like you have to be like them, but notice how that resonates with you. Once you do that, and this is another thing too, Let's say you have, uh, you know, you have a great, strong presence on Twitter. Let's say you're just like monster Twitter person, and your audience is not. That's not necessarily going to help you grow your audience. So even though you're tweeting up the wazoo, how great your podcast is, or hey, I have a new episode up, if they're not on Twitter, it's not going to work. So find out what, where they are. Are they on Google Plus? Are they on Facebook? Do they engage on Facebook? Do they like Facebook? So you have to pick and choose and you go where they are. As much as I am sad to say, the majority of my people engage with me, with my yoga stuff on Facebook. I have to put the yoga stuff on Facebook. I put all the technology stuff on Twitter. That's where I get that response. So. I have a little bit of a divide, but I know where my people are. That's where they respond to me, so I have to go where they are. So social media, using complementary media to support your podcast. This is something that I started to do organically for my own podcast and have been doing a lot for the Libsyn podcast. Uh, that we, you know, we're reaching a lot of podcasters and I've been doing a lot of testing to see what people really like to sort of engage with. So for me, personally, Using a lot of images has really worked for my brand, for my yoga brand. People, I really love Instagram. I have a lot of people that engage with me on Instagram. I've found a way to be able to market myself in a way that's kind of goofy and fun and engage with them because that's where they are. I've also got, there's a huge yoga community on Instagram. Who knew? Because we're all so obsessed with these darn poses. So everybody keeps putting those up. So there's lots of hashtags to use on Instagram. Pinterest is also a big one, as well as Facebook. So I can repurpose my images with a link to one of my podcast episodes and introduce people to it. What's really interesting is that now video has also come into play. So for the Libsyn podcast, I've been kind of playing around a little bit with creating promos for each episode on YouTube. So I'll do like a minute, like about a three minute video of our long, podcast, which is a, generally around an hour to an hour and a half, and I'll just sum up what we're talking about in the podcast really quickly, and I'll give them calls to action. Email us for feedback, or I'll, or you know, call this number, or check out our show notes like right away just for that episode. Uh, that's I'm still kind of developing there. I'm not sure how that's working, but at the same time, we get a lot of juice in terms of the YouTube. Vine and Instagram are about the same. So I have done this for my personal podcast as well. I've done little tiny videos really quickly telling people like, hey, I have a new episode up, something like that on Instagram. It's very, very um, good to do. So in terms of audio, we are, uh, we are the ones obviously that, ho that we host the, your media, Libsyn does. And then we <coughs> provide the RSS feed and you can do all kinds of things with it. You might think that something like SoundCloud could be a competitor to us, right? Because they are a completely different platform and they're doing some interesting things in terms of podcasting. But what I find with SoundCloud is that you can do the same thing that I've been doing in YouTube for my podcast. You can create sound bites of your podcast and you can have like a little, uh, your YouTube account, short snippets of your work. It doesn't have to be your full podcast. It could be just a little bit. And you can have an image, this is so good, you can use the image to put into your SoundCloud, and then the SoundCloud is now Google searchable. You can see the player in Google, it comes up on Google, and you can also pin it. How cool is that? So you get that one little thing and you can put your podcast down in all of these different ways. So remember when we were coming out when I was telling you where are, where is your audience? How do you know? You just have to test it. You gotta go and see if you can get somebody who didn't even know what a podcast was to take a step towards you. You meet them where they are. Maybe they're not hanging around where you are. Text. 
Another big thing is show notes. I know that these are the hardest things. I just had a poll for podcasters. Blog show notes are perhaps the most heinous thing for podcasters to do, especially the big list of stuff and you gotta write all this stuff. But I gotta tell you, it's really important for people to do it. Uh, this is an, actually one of the latest episodes of Podcast 411, which is like um, the podcaster studio, I mean the actor studio for podcasters from Rob Walsh, who is uh, the VP of uh, Podcaster Relations for Libsyn. He just interviewed Mac OS Ken. I'm not sure if you guys, does anybody know Mac OS, OS Ken? He is a day late podcaster. His podcast is about 10 minutes long, and it's all about the Mac. I love it. He's amazing. He's a, you would totally dig him. He's really like, he's, he's so great. His, the sound, he's an artist when he, when he does his stuff. Um, he scripts everything out. He even scripts, it's weird, it's not necessarily improv, but he scripts even pauses because it delivers something to you. It's so great, he's amazing. But anyway, he scripts everything and then back in the day, he asked advice from another longtime car podcaster, should I make show notes? And the other podcaster said to him, you know what, no, because then people won't listen to your content. And so he didn't. And now he says he shoots him, he's just like, oh, because he could have had, now he's been podcasting since 2005, he could have had an incredible Apple News site up to now. Daily Apple News until now. Isn't that crazy? So it's like, you use it, you leverage it. People will still listen, you'll get more. And also, social media groups and communities. You can always go in there and write stuff, like big stuff, ask questions, engage. That'll get you more listeners. So this is all about not thinking an audio podcast or a video podcast is the only thing. It can do so much more. Person to person, the way that we're doing right now. So first, I have to ask you, do you guys have a pitch? Does anybody have your podcast pitch where I can say, give me your pitch. What's your podcast and what is it about? in like, you know, a minute or less. This is something we need to know. So if somebody tells you, you gotta really quickly have it come out of your mouth, what it is. It's something we also forget, because that will get that conversation going. And the stuff, <laughs> we have the stuff, right? So right now we have these nice little handouts where this is our show artwork. It's a little square, it's our show artwork, on the back of our podcast, we have a little description, and then we have all of the key places where you can subscribe and give us feedback, right on the back. Super easy, really cute. <laughs> so you get to have a little bit of stuff, and I know it, it, it doesn't necessarily have, doesn't happen all the time, but all of these places, the conferences, the meetups, the, you know, the business connections, the speaking gigs, all of this time is for you exactly to pitch your stock, to be able to share. Now in terms of the business connections, for those of you who are more professionals or have a, a business kind of uh, podcast, I'm going to go back to yoga. I can very easily go into a chiropractic office, a masseuse office, a, a private training, a PTs, all of that stuff, and just tell them, hey, I have a yoga podcast, yoga studios, here's the stuff. Give them one of your handouts, give them a, a CD of what you have. I also like the USB ports, those are really great. Uh, and pass them out, make connections, that's where your audience is. It's all in that same field. You totally get expanded, like the way that I talked about before, keeping an open mind. Here we go. All right, so. All right, so the holy grail of podcasting promotion is being a podcast guest. Audio promos for other people and audio feedback for other podcasts. So all of these people are already podcasting, built-in audience. Do anything. If somebody asks you to be on their podcast, go. And you need to have a place or an action to give them. This is really important. This is something that refines it. Hey guys, if you want to, you know, come and check out my stuff, go to, you know, blog.lipson.com slash 
your, the podcast name that you were on, and then when they come on, they get something that's just for them from that podcast. So if they listen, they'll engage with you. Audio promos for others. People ask me all the time, will you record something for my podcast? Meaning, hey, welcome to whoever they ask, whatever their podcast is. This is Elsie Escobar from The Feed, the official Lips and Podcast, and you are listening to XYZ. Super great. And audio feedback. People love that stuff. You can send it to them and ask them questions, engage with their community, especially the ones that have something to do with you. If they don't have audio feedback, so what? You send it to them. They'll be really excited to get it. Believe me. I've done that so many times, even with people that don't podcast, I send them audio feedback. They love it. It's awesome. So tactics, here we go. My big mistake was not having any. <laughs> because I, didn't, I thought I was an artist. I didn't want to do any of this marketing stuff. I don't want to tell people to listen to my podcast. They should totally just do it because that's so awesome. But you know what? No. So for many years, I did it wrong, if you will. So within your podcast, having your intro is great. This is from to pantyhose, technology to travel, makeup to marketing, and style to social media. This is Lady Business Radio, and now, live from her home office in Thrillington, Delaware, your hostess, Jessica Kupferman. So she had that little intro created on Fiverr. She just gave them the script and they created that little intro for her without music and it's so cool. She's the coolest person ever. How quick, that was less than, that was 29 seconds. Really fast little intro, captures the entire thing of her podcast. Your outro, to really have a little bit of a, a call to action. That way you don't have to say it all the time, they'll do Thank it. Thank you so much for listening to Lady Business Radio. You want to shout out on air? Leave us a review in iTunes, and Jessica will personally thank you live during the podcast. Visit LadyBusinessMedia.com for the iTunes subscription button or for resources and replays. Thanks again for listening, and keep kicking butt out there. Super sweet, super awesome, doesn't seem salesly. At least not for me. I was like, oh, cool, there's all the stuff I can do for her. So the podcast promo. This is really good stuff. Hi, my name is Zach, and about two years ago, my best friend Ray and I started a podcast basically about our friendship. It's called Blogcast. It's uh, two best friends telling the world about their world. So if you like best friends, and you like awesome stories, and you like awesome best friends, then please head over to blog-cast.com or iTunes and check out any one of our wonderful episodes of Blogcast, powered by Libsyn. Really nice, huh? No biggie. You can quick, quickly make that. That's also a really great exercise for you to be able to encapsulate what you're about in 30 seconds or less. You can put all of that, again, on Instagram or, on, and, and, or YouTube or whatever you want. You can put that stuff out there all the time. So your ID3 tags, having an image, the ID3, do you guys know what ID3 tags are? Yeah? So having an image is really great. And also being able to have as the artist, the album, art, your website, being able to tell you um, exactly where you, what, what you want them to do here in the comment section, you can have a call to action. You can actually write, email the feed at lipson.com and have it down in this section here. You can also, in the lyrics section, put your show notes. It's something that I do all the time, and now with the new iPhone apps, when you start to scroll through, people can read the show notes and actually click through if you have them in HTML to go where you want them to go through the show notes, which is super great. Easy to remember actionable URLs. So this is something that you guys can know right now. If I tell you, go to blog.lipson.com slash share, that'll auto-populate a tweet to share our podcast. So here, lipson.com slash iTunes immediately goes into the iTunes um, and, and to the iTunes page for a podcast. RickMulready.com slash free 
This is Rick Mulready from the Inside Social Media Podcast. And what he does here is when you go in there, you have an opt-in, and he gives only his podcast listeners a special little gift, which is awesome. LateNightPodcast.com is by Mark Mason, who is a buddy of mine, who's an amazing marketer. And what he does here when you go to the Late Night Podcast is he has everything in there. So you don't have to say, okay, you go to feedback. Oh, uh, you can leave me a review. You can subscribe. Like you just go to LateNightFeedbackPodcast.com and it has everything in one place. AyurvedicToolbox.com. Uh, We're going to come up to this next really cool thing that I just found out about. Uh, once I'll, 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 meet, I'll tell you here on these tactics here. So on your website, an easy way to subscribe to your podcast. Duh. <laughs> and so, a description of your podcast. How many of you guys have a description of your podcast on your page somewhere? Like where it's a small little thing, right? A way to contact you because people really need it. I, I guarantee you, I can't tell you how many times I've waited and looked for people's email addresses when I wanted to, to talk to them. A press page could be a, sort of like a conglomerate of all of these things together. So a press page involves your podcast artwork, a headshot of yours of some sort, or a picture that you like of yourself, a really quick snippet of what your about page is or like about your podcast, and any podcasts that you've been on that you can highlight, and your podcast promo for people to link through. So all of that stuff people can take and share very quickly. An easy way to consume your podcast, but obviously a podcast player somewhere on your website would be nice. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. <laughs> a podcast archive page, which is something that we got feedback on ourselves uh, because we don't have a place where people can easily see all of the podcasts in one place. It's like they have to keep searching through. We had just a page where it has all of them listed, super easy to navigate for people to read it. Your show notes and blog notes can have, this is what's on the bottom of our posts. We have help to spread the word, and then a little kind of call to action to tweet about us, if you dug the episode, to leave us a rating, and how to subscribe via all these different places. This is just a piece of snippet that I put on every single one of my show notes just on the bottom so people can kind of do it, right? And help them share your stuff. And the last one is lead pages, which I was gonna show you about. Does anybody know about lead pages? This is a paid kind of product, but it's really cool. So lead pages gives you the ability to be able to create an opt-in page for anything, basically. And they have one for podcasts. This is my friend Kate Stillman, who's from the Yoga Healer podcast, and she uses this URL called the AyurvedicToolbox.com. She hasn't actually set it up just yet. She just started this. And when she says that in her podcast, hey guys, come to the AyurvedicToolbox.com to get your free cheat sheets for you know seasonal eating. And so when people come to this page, they immediately get like a little one minute video of her showing how to do how to, what they're gonna get, these cute little sheet sheets, then a subscribe to iTunes, review your podcast, and then you click here, comes a pop out, they give you their newsletter, their uh, email address, and you get the stuff. So she's actually harnessing all of her podcast listeners to take a deeper step towards her, which is great. So yeah, Lead Pages is a paid product. You can, I think it's leadpages.net uh, if you wanna kind of find out about that. And I waited. I know you guys love iTunes, and I put that last because I don't. I, th I don't. I really don't like people focusing on iTunes so much. But <coughs> in order for iTunes to work for you, your title is one of the most important things you can have. So if you are having, if you are looking to find your audience, you need to know what people are searching for, even if it's, if it's improv stuff. You need to have improv somewhere in your name. So even if you have a podcast that has no improv name into it at all, and you're looking for improv people, you'll put your name, whatever that podcast is, and then at the end of it, you'll put improv, improv podcast. Just add it to the end. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be the way you brand yourself, but put it into <coughs> iTunes just because you can. In terms of your title, same thing. Elsie Escobar yoga teacher because that's what people are looking for so add it you don't get any demerits for that 
It's actually, if that's, if however you want to classify yourself, add it towards, on the, um, towards the end in the our, our iTunes author field. Your description, the first two sentences of your description of your podcast need to have all the information people need about your podcast. Because those first two sentences are the ones that are going to, they're probably the only ones they're going to read. Then there's a little more thingy, you can press a little more and then read more about you. So don't start your stories at the top, start your stories at the bottom of why you started podcasting. Episode titles are very, very important for iTunes searchability. So if you have a big time guest, if you have a topic that you're dealing with at this moment that is very um, high, then you need to put it on your podcast title. Don't get creative with the podcast title. You can get created on your blog if you want, not on the iTunes title there. So if somebody's looking to, you know, if I have a name like Pranayama, does anybody know what Pranayama means? Okay, so Pranayama are breathing exercises in yoga, that's what you call them. So if somebody was looking for a way to get better breathing, then that's what I would call an episode. Breathe easier. Learn to breathe instead of pranayama, <laughs> right? Because that way it'll get people to step into it, even though I would call it pranayama. Then I would teach you that breathing is called pranayama, right? So let's go back and just fill this all up. So the evolution of your, pa of your podcast is all about expansion, seeing outside the box, and all of those little tactics that I gave you guys. Implementing both of those things is going to really develop your audience to be able to grow. But none of this is possible if we don't address that foundation that I had at the beginning. Without that power, without that foundation, any of those tactics that you put on, it's not going to take. People are not going to commit to you. So by strengthening your podcast foundation, you empower yourself and your community, providing the perfect stepping stone to grow and evolve your work. So if you want to um, reach me uh, with my own consulting, yogi.me at lc at yogi.me. I also am on Libsyn all the time. You can reach me there at lc at libsyn.com if you have any questions about hosting, podcasting, or anything that we can do for you guys to support you guys. And I would love it if you guys checked out our new podcast. It's called The Feed. The official Libsyn podcast, the podcast that takes it beyond how to podcast into keeping you podcasting. See that? Small, little bit. Uh, Libsyn.com slash iTunes. And if you have any feedback for us that you want us to, you know, address for you, the feed at Libsyn.com. Thank you very much.